I am the submarine. Sci-Li. This is Sci-Li Gaming. We have game reviews and game walkthroughs and game commentaries because we are Sci-Li Gaming. Assassin's Creed occupies a special place in my heart. I love the original and the second game, and I think that the ideas behind the series, while far-fetched, are interesting, to say the least. Over the last year, though, Ubisoft decided that it wanted to punch that love in the face with a ring, with Assassin's Creed 3 being one of the most disappointing games I have played in a while. Don't get me wrong, mechanically it was sound, and the new engine is beautiful, but the rest of the game was just so uninspired it just hurt to play. Plus, Connor was a huge ass all the time, and never once stopped and thought about what he was doing. Regardless, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is the latest entry into the long-running series. Being both interested in pirates and hoping for the best from Assassin's Creed, I was hopeful. Players take control of Edward Kenway, the grandfather of our reluctant hero from 3. Kenway is a farmhand in England, and being tired of being poor, decides to leave his significant other behind and sail for the West Indies in search of his fortune. The game begins by dropping the player onto a deserted island, chasing an assassin who refuses to stop attempting to kill you. Disposing of him, Kenway gains his trademark assassin's attire. Thankfully, following the relatively short tutorial and murder of an assassin, the Assassins and Templar story gets pushed to the back burner in favor for focusing on the village Nassau, which serves as the haven for the not-so-lawful gents of the West Indies. What follows is a rump about the West Indies, with familiar historical faces like James Kidd and Edward Teach. All of this occurs in a beautifully detailed open world that is rife with things to explore and discover. On land, players will find gameplay that is very similar to the rest of the series. Towns are large and open, with a variety of things to climb and plan attacks from. Viewpoints are still littered about, serving to reveal the map and collectible items, side missions, and warehouse raids. These secondary targets are often patrolled openly by British and Spanish soldiers and invite the player to solve problems in creative ways. One set of side missions presents the player with the opportunity to raid warehouses for cargo. To begin, the player must find the key holder, who can be found using Eagle Vision. After stealing the key from his corpse or as he patrols, a fairly generous reward is gained. The magic is in how open the approaches to taking the warehouses are, allowing players to do it quietly simply by stealing the key and getting out, or, as in many cases that I took myself, to butcher the entire warehouse staff and take the cargo over their bodies. Combat is similar to other Assassin's Creed titles. The same counter-instant-kill mechanics are still in place as before, with slightly updated kill animations. Ubisoft did manage to mix it up a bit by changing how some of the tougher enemies function, such as forcing players to stumble a brute before infinitely disemboweling them, but combat still lacks any distinct challenge. Admittedly, Kenway's arsenal is significantly slimmer than the previous assassins, keeping to a pair of sabers, pistols, hidden blades, the rope dart, and blowpipe as offensive weapons. Despite still being able to expertly use any enemy's weapons that he picks up off the ground, Gone are the days of throwing two-handed weapons across distances to impale targets. Enemies, while easy to kill, though, are still massively fun to massacre. The open freedom given in side missions is replaced during the heavily scripted storyline sections. Despite dramatic improvements in presentation and character over AC3, I still found that many of the missions are over-reliant on lengthy tailing sections, where the player is tasked with simply following a target without being spotted. It would perhaps be difficult to do so from street level, but since you can use eagle vision to see enemies through walls, the stalking sections were mostly reduced to a casual walk along the rooftops, rather than any meaningful gameplay segments. Of course, the majority of the game is about being a pirate. What would a pirate be, then, without, you know, sailing the ocean in a sweet-ass pirate ship? The Jackdaw serves as Kenway's ship, and as Ubisoft repeated over and over before the game was released, the second main character of the game. The Jackdaw acts both as a transport and a warship, and serves as home to some of the greatest shanty singers that have ever lived. The boat mechanics have, essentially, been lifted directly from Assassin's Creed 3, with minor changes to improve accessibility. Guns are easier to aim, docking is done at the press of a button, and a magnet that I believe is attached to the bottom of a boat, and stopping can happen on a wind. It is not a sailing sim, but it is an absolute blast to play. Side activities also exist throughout the naval world, Forts litter the map, serving as, essentially, the viewpoints of the ocean. Once taken over, they reveal their section of the map and all of its collectible goodies that are spread around the islands. The player can then go and find different harpooning targets to gain crafting materials, 
find collectibles on the many small islands that litter the map, or just sail around, not having to worry about the endless cannon fire from the previously hostile fort. Perhaps the most exciting part of the game is the naval combat. British and Spanish vessels sail to and fro, ripe for the taking. Players have access to several methods of destroying enemy ships, including a plethora of broadside cannons, reverse firing fire barrels, and chain shot to slow the target down. Battles are fast and chaotic, with smoke billowing from both ships as cannons roar and ships rumble, with the shouts of sailors and screams of the wounded. Of course, just battling ships wouldn't make you a pirate. After reducing them to a flaming shell, you gain the ability to board and ransack the ships for their treasure. Boarding is exceptionally well done. Pulling alongside a vulnerable enemy ship, your pirate crew will toss grappling hooks across, latching them onto the vessel and pulling it towards you as the enemy crew violently tries to fight you off. The player is then free to let go of the wheel of the jackdaw and use any variety of methods to secure the ship, be it crossing on the masts and dropping in from above to swinging across the, to the enemy deck via rope. The seamless integration of naval elements and land elements of gameplay is remarkably well done, and an absolute blast to be a part of. Crafting also makes a return, requiring players to kill and skin animals to use their hides to craft a variety of pouches and baubles to increase the effectiveness of your character as an assassin or, you know, a really good ammo carrier. Upgrades increase Kenway's ammo capacity and health, and can provide a pretty distinct advantage in many situations. Fortunately, the game does seem to like to waste time. For example, the ship upgrades are really neat, requiring the player to find blueprints before being able to upgrade to the best items in the game. But the ship trading minigame is lackluster and annoying. Trading missions generally offer a reward that could be gained easier elsewhere, it also involves a turn-based naval battle that the player has little control over beyond what ships are involved, and that is really boring to watch. The boring nature of it, plus the ludicrous times that the trading missions take to complete, make the entirety of the minigame a painful endeavor at best. Thankfully, all of the boring tasks can easily be circumvented with any of the other, more interesting tasks that are available. Multiplayer even makes a comeback in a similar form to previous games, placing up to eight players in different styles of game modes, hunting and being hunted by each other. Entirely new are also several cooperative missions, where up to four players are tasked with hunting targets together, synchronizing kills and looking for the highest score they can achieve as a group. Rushing to beat your teammates in cooperative makes it less about stealth and more about being a coordinated group of psychopaths, but the entirety of multiplayer offers a fun, if forgettable, alternative to the explosive action in vistas of single player. When the tutorial section is done, the game sets you free on the open ocean and places a distant objective marker on the edge of the map. It took seven hours to reach that marker. I was drawn into a dynamic naval battle between British and Spanish forces. I navigated a storm and looted trade ships wrecked by its water tornadoes. I attempted to harpoon a great white whale with no upgrades to my hunting equipment. I docked at a fishing village with singing Spanish women and beat their boyfriends into the sand. The Templars and Assassins are a distant, quiet buzz in a world full of treasure and debauchery, and the game is all the better for it. Despite some small bugs and a few less than entertaining minigames, Black Flag serves as an excellent entry into the series as a whole. Ubisoft has managed to surprise me, and I hope future iterations continue to do the same. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag from Ubisoft Entertainment gets a 9 out of 10, and is available on Steam and other retailers now for $60 or your regional equivalent. Until next time, stay awesome, and cheers.